Good morning. First of all, I want to tell you that everyone last year done a great job with their buses. It's made it easier on the mechanics <coughs> to uh, get their buses ready to go. And I'd also like to recognize the mechanics again. You can't see them back there, but they do. They do a lot of hard work. They have regulations and rules and laws to go by just like you all do. We just can't fix the bus or repair it any way that we want to. They have guidelines they have to go by. So it's not, uh, it's not easy for them sometimes because it gets frustrating because you can't just do it like you would at the house. Okay, so uh, that being said, there is a new preacher, I think, from where I'm looking. You tell me I have no red chart? Anyway, up at the very top, it says, print your name. This is a new preacher at form. Please print your names. We'll make it easy, my life easier this year because most of you sign your name like a doctor, but most of you aren't. And I can't read your writing. And some of you forget to put your bus number on there. So I have to go by mileage to figure out who's who was. So, Again, you only have to sign it one time. So where you used to have to sign it five times, and you all go back on one time. And uh, so you sign it once, up in the middle of the top. Print your name to the left. And I would really greatly appreciate that. And bus number. And if you do forget your bus number, if you print your name, then I know where you're at. Okay. Those. This is on page 66 of your handbook. If you want to look it over. <laughs> you know airplanes flying by. Right there, I don't know if y'all can see that. That's the print sign. Over there is the bus number. This little area right here used to be in the bottom right hand corner where you would write your deficiencies if you have something wrong with your bus, okay? Just look at it. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. It's basically the same information. It's just been rearranged. They have omitted some things and they have added some new. So just look over it, okay? Uh, if you do have an issue with your bus, bring it to me. If I'm not there, give it to Chris. If Chris is not there, let the mechanic know that you laid your ride up on my desk. You can also text him or call me and let me know you left it there. Okay? Especially if, if something needs to be looked at that it could possibly down your bus. You don't need to take for granted that it's okay and you go ahead and drive it. So, uh, let's see. My cell phone number, if you do not have it, is on page four of the handbook. You can text me, like I said, also. Uh, monthly inspections. You have a schedule on the bulkhead of your bus. If you don't know what a bulkhead is, that little flat area right above the driver's seat. Okay? Please try and look at that. Uh, you guys have anywhere from five to seven, depending on how many of you miss your days, and uh, forget to bring your bus in for inspection. That is a state law. They must be inspected once a month. Now, also, the whole year is in your packet. So you'll be able to look from now to the end of May when your bus is doing inspection. If you're like me and have trouble remembering things, how many of you have a cell phone? That's what I thought, no. If you have a Apple or an iPhone, tell Siri to remind you one or two days before your bus is doing inspection. It will help things out great. If you have a Android, I believe you all use Google. Try that one. Let's try it. Y'all really do a great job, but there's some that still have trouble getting them in on time, and uh, we greatly appreciate it if you could make arrangements in your schedules for the next year for one day out of the month to have your bus available. If you can't, get in contact with me a day or two before so I can rearrange the schedule, okay? All right, next is fluid checks. 
You are required to check the fluids on your bus once a day. Okay? And I'm going to say that I love you do a great job doing that. But there's always that exception to the rule. The one time you don't check it, I check it every day. But the one time you don't check it, your four quarts will know. You didn't check it yesterday. Oh, you got a major leak somewhere. That is the main reason for checking it every day because we, you need to know if something has happened between yesterday and today when you go get on the bus. Whether you check it in the morning, whether you check it in the afternoon, it's once a day. Okay? Uh, I'll just give you an example. This is some of those. Uh, my transmission's not shifting right now. Okay? If you check the transmission fluid, uh, uh, no. When's the last time you checked it? Uh, <laughs> You've got been a couple of days. Nine times out of ten, you're low on fluid. You're going to have leaks on the engine and the transmission and the rear end. That is normal. Okay? So if you go three or four weeks without checking anything, you could lose a quarter bolt or a quarter transmission fluid. So let's try to do a little bit better job on that. That's all I ask for that. Well, let's see where we're at. If you do not know where to check the fluids out on the bus, come see me. I'll be more than happy to train you on that, show you where everything is, okay? All right, on page 40 of your handbook, I think I've got page 40, 41, and maybe half the page 42, I'm not for sure. There's only like a page and a half or so that has to deal with your bus as far as what you need to be doing mechanical wise and keeping track of it. Uh, report all damage. Uh, you're all always good at that. You either take pictures, send them to me, you call me, you text me, you come and see me. That, that's great. Let's just keep that up. Disabled bus, and we'll go over that again. That's also on page 40. If your bus is stuck in the ditch or you're stuck in a turnaround and you just can't move it, whatever the case may be. If you can't back up, call for assistance, but you are only allowed to let either someone from the garage, board personnel, board personnel vehicle, or a subcontracted towing service pull or move your bus. Your buddy down the street with the four wheel drive is not allowed to hook the chain and pull your bus out of the ditch. Would it be easier? Probably. If something happens, we're in trouble. As Rob says, it's not a problem until it becomes a problem. And I think everyone here knows that. The new drivers, I'll just reiterate that in case it's not been communicated. If you're a new driver here and your bus breaks down, if you get stuck, no one except us can pull your bus, okay? Bus Garage Protocol, page 41. Need y'all to please read that someday. Uh, it basically says that you need to stay behind the yellow line in the garage unless otherwise instructed to do so. Uh, it means no hanging out in the garage on the other side of that uh, yellow line. There are OSHA regulations, just like you have to follow guidelines on your bus, I have to follow them in the garage also. Uh, make sure you stay behind that yellow line. If you need anything, that yellow line goes all the way to Chris's office where the window is to pick up parts. Now, I know sometimes you have to walk through the garage for something. That is fine as long as you've been invited to walk through there or you've been given permission. Other than that, don't need to be hanging out in the garage unless you're coming for business in the garage. Do you have a picture on the tire curtain? Some of you are wearing the right front car out, some of them are wearing the right rear car out. And I know that the curves and the bus loops, uh, I'm having to change these now. They've changed the state a lot. If you all start wearing the rubber off the side of the tire, they might have over three fourths of the tread wear left, and I'm having to change them. That's a lot of money. So as you're pulling through the bus loop, please be aware of where you're at. And where you're from.
front tires were rubbing. Uh, it was hard to see. I had one a lot worse than that, but we've already got rid of it, so I couldn't take a picture of it for you. But just be aware of where you're at when you're in the bus loop, when you're pulling around that front car, hitting that curve. I know some of you might be trying to get real close so they can step from the sidewalk right up into the bus. Uh, you want to be careful about that. I'll tell one on myself one time. I was subbing over at North Law High School and I pulled up and I got real close like that. Didn't rub the tar though, but when I opened the door and all the kids got on it, the bus went sideways. I couldn't close the door. I had to get the kids to get and lean to the left side of the bus and start to close the door and pull out. So let's not get too close to the curves, and I believe the kids can still be able to get on the bus. All right, next. Items that could become a flying projectile are prohibited on a bus. KDE is coming down hard on this, so some of you. I'm going to give you a chance, if you've got stuff on your bus, I didn't want to start taking personal items off your bus and throwing it away. So when you get your bus, look, if you've got some of these items on there, go ahead and take them off. Brooms, dust pans, items in the dash are just a few examples. Uh, not been finding any uh, spray cans or anything like that. We're doing good there. Items added onto a bus that is not OEM without written consent from KDE is prohibited. Uh, the, if it's not been put on there from the manufacturer, it cannot be on the bus. So all the cup holders that are screwed all over the dashboards, if you want to keep them, you're going to need to remove those off your bus. Uh, I found a few that has file holders. Like they went to the office depot, got the little things that put files in and they screwed them onto them in the past. Let's not do that. Now, uh, this is the harsh part. This is, you know, you know, I love every one of you, but any of those items that is found on the bus during or between inspections will be removed. Okay? If you have a cargo area, you can put the big rooms under there, whatever the case may be. Uh, we've got brooms and dust pans at the garage if you park at the garage. And if you park at home, I'm sure you all have a place to store your brooms or whatever at your house. So there's technically no need for a broom or anything to be on your bus. Agree? Thank you. Alright, we're working on the cleaning kits. We've almost got those done. Some of you already have cleaning kits in your, on your bus. They are in the triangle reflector box. It's on the side of your bus. And we've got a few of those that's being replaced. They're a little dirty. Some of them's never been used. So all I can say is we're going to have them there for your benefit. It's up to you to use them. Bus pickup. Next Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. We still got a few items left that we're trying to do with the buses. We want to make sure we've got them all ready to go. So if you need to pick your bus up, it will be next Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, August 8th, 9th, and 10th. And uh, I want to ask Marshall, did you mention something, Marshall, about we're supposed to run the routes? I didn't hear that earlier unless you mentioned it and I didn't hear it. Okay, got pre-filled timesheets out there in the, in the hall. 
And they'll have some at the garage next week. I'll get these put your name. Thank you. 